Yeah, I think we should just start, maybe, and like people are gonna join us. Who here has never heard of the Lima update? Raise your hand in the channel. Great. This is a very good sign. So we're talking amongst uh, connoisseurs. <laughs> no hand raised, like. Okay, people have questions today, which is a good thing because today we have Chang Hong Chao. First, let's, <laughs> let me wish you all a happy new year because we haven't talked since the new year started. Um, a more precise day than Q1. Like you're starting with the hard questions already. Let's keep that for a little bit later. So let me wish you a new year. Uh, a happy new year, a happy new upgrade, a happy new, a lot of things for Alephium. Um, we've worked on the Lima update since the mainnet launch, which is more than a year ago. We announced it officially in October. We made another article and update in December, and now it's getting closer. So now is the occasion to ask questions and to talk about technicals a little bit. So we have Cheng and Hong Chao from far away, and they both are here to talk about it, and we couldn't be more happy. And I think you'll join me in being happy. You can maybe happy smiley or happy meme until you have something. So as, as always, Sedo is the happy DJ of this session, so thanks to him, we have a working Discord session. And last time we had a few issues, but today should work well. And um, sadly, only the moderator and the guests can speak. But like, you can always ask the questions in the tech channel, in the channel on the side, that you can reach out from the upper right. And uh, we'll take the questions at the end in the Q and A. Um, the last talk with we was with Flux it was a month and a half ago, something like this. And the next one will be with Nervos uh, next week, actually. Uh, but I'll tell you that after this talk today concludes again. Uh, so without further ado, let's start. So Hong Chao and Cheng, maybe you can unlock yourselves so that people can see you. Hey, Cheng, how are you? Oh, good. Hi, Hong Chao. Be nice. Happy New Year. Thank you. Oh, it's Happy New Year in China, especially right now, actually. Oh, it's coming, right? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's the weekend. It's the weekend, Saturday, yeah. So, yeah. We'll, so we'll you. have to wait for next, next Tech Talk to wish it, actually. Uh, so thanks for coming today. And we want to talk about the Lemon Grade and start with the easy questions. Uh, so, what is the Lemo upgrade? Like we've talked about it for a long time. Uh, is it? An, is it? It's the first network upgrade. Uh, is it? What kind of upgrade is it? So, if you Chen could enlighten us a little bit about as an introduction of what the Lemo upgrade is and a refresher for everyone here. Uh, yeah. So, so Lemo upgrade is a. Uh... Hard fork is the first net network upgrade for RFU. Uh, I I genuinely don't know how to summarize in one sentence because it includes so many uh, new features and new changes, uh, like functionality to the virtual machine, uh, security and performance upgrade to the whole blockchain, and uh, also improvements to the programming language, uh, improvements to the endpoints. Uh, yeah, a lot of things we worked very hard on that for like more than one year. Uh, it's hard work uh, because it includes a lot of new features and breaking changes. Um, and uh, it's something uh, we kind of uh, necessary to do it for a uh, bait dev experience uh, for a bait uh, future of RFU, basically. Cool. Uh, so like the question that energy Asked actually is coming soon. Like when? When will it activate? Can you tell us a bit more about this? Uh, I, I think it's definitely going to be for the end of Q1. Uh, initially, we thought that we probably 
uh, could be by the end of this month, but now it looks like uh, uh, a bit harsh. Uh, we uh, need a bit more time to test it and also to communicate. Uh, especially Gates is uh, is based in China, so uh, we can only kind of um, coordinate with them after Chinese New Year. Uh, right now is uh, is uh, probably the longest longest holiday in China right now. Uh, yeah. So we're gonna to coordinate everything after. Like probably uh, after the Chinese New Year, uh, to make sure that the whole ecosystem will be uh, at first need to upgrade to 1.6, and then uh, we're gonna to discuss when we're gonna to activate it. Then we are ready to go. Um, so it, it's cool. very very close, but we cannot give a exact timestamp right now. Can we say that it's never been closer than today? <laughs> <laughs> Hong Chao, can you tell us a bit about the main uh, features of the Lemo upgrade, please? Yeah, as Chun said, it's very difficult to come up with an exhaustive list of everything. So I'll just talk about like a few areas. Number one, we have introduced a new set of uh, VM instructions and building functions to make smart contract development more efficient. And uh, this include, for example, uh, a subcontract system, which you can think of it as a, it's almost like a more secure version of a, of a map concept. Uh, we also introduced uh, the dynamic array indexing, and also some 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 building functions to, for example, facilitate debugging and logging and so on. Um, we also have introduced. Uh, features at both the language and the VM level to make smart contrast development more secure. And that includes, for example, the, a new asset permission system, uh, which at the code level dictates uh, what exactly a smart contract can, can spend. Um, so, uh, which is a, a pretty big improvement over the uh, Solidity smart contrast development. Um, we also have a external introduced ex an external call check system, uh, which by default you have to be explicit about like who can call a public method of a smart contract if this method can mutate the state of the contract. Uh, the reason is because this uh, was a source of security issues for for like smart contract development, so we want to, want to address that at the uh, language and the VM level. Uh, we have also improved the node APIs and SDK to ease the development cycle for the smart contracts. Uh, for example, the common tasks such as coding unit tests, integration tests, and also the like the deployment to like testnet and uh, mainnet. Um, we also we want to make it, make that very very easy, basically. So I'll stop uh, at that. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty good list. <laughs> that's a pretty good <laughs> list. Thank you. Uh, like, so you 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 evoked uh, the the bridge. Uh, like about the bridge. Like, so that's the that would be the start to inter uh, a very interesting interoperability for the network. So, do we have? Um, do we think that when is the bridge going to be available after the Lemo upgrade? Like, is it going to come soon? Is it going to take a little bit more time? Do you have a a bit more precision about that. Yeah, so so right after the, the mainnet upgrade, we plan to spend some time uh, to monitor the network first. Uh, we don't have a specific date to um, to launch the bridge on the mainnet. Since, um, it, as we all know, bridge is a very critical piece of infrastructure and it's very critical for our ecosystem. So we want to be very careful about that. Um, but we have already deployed the bridge on, on the testnet, which is uh, uh, Lemon compatible for a while now. Um, so we've been testing the full stack, including the, the UI, the smart contracts, the, the Guardian code, uh, the infrastructure, and the goal is to be, for us to be very confident about uh, our code, and also like to gain some operational experience. So that we know what to re react when when things happen. Um, so so yeah, we will take uh, however however it takes to 
to you know be be confident that uh, it is secure to 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 deploy. Yeah. Uh, so for people like yeah. Koef who uh, clearly expressed curiosity while you were talking, uh, it's possible to come and test the bridge, right, on the test net. Yeah, on, the, on the test net, yes, on the test net is possible. Yeah. Okay. Um, and 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 which tokens will be supported by the bridge? Do you think? Like um, so Ether, Ethereum, like it's a bridge to Ether, right? Yeah, so it's a back and forth between uh, Alphium and Ethereum. So of course, Alph will be supported, and in theory, like you can you can basically bridge any token as long as they are set up properly. And there's like a couple of steps that you need to do to to before you can transfer tokens. But uh, yeah, there will be instructions to to do that. And yeah, what's your next another question? Another other question? Yeah, no, yeah, like uh, so. The the dex comes after the bridge, right? Yeah, uh, and and it it's true the other way around too, right? If we want to get listed on uh, on Uniswap, then the bridge needs to be already up and running. Is it right? Yeah, exactly. If if we want to list, uh, for example, Alf on uh, uh, Uniswap, we need to bridge. Of to the Ethereum side, for example, and then we can, yeah, then we can create a pool for that. Okay, cool. Yep. Uh, like, I wanted to ask you, Cheng, also, do we have already plans to bridge to other chains? Oh, yes, definitely. Um, as I believe, I'm, I'm personally, I'm a believer of multi chain future. So, uh, the more we can uh, connect to the, the base, uh, uh, interoperability we're going to have. Um, right now, we don't have exact uh, or extra energy on that. But, uh, for example, the Rosen bridge of Ergo seem, seems to be very promising and interesting. And also, the community of Ergo is, uh, is great. And yeah, we have been in good, uh, very good relationship with them. So we're going to re, uh, research on that direction once we have more resources. Right now we are pretty much focused on the, the upgrades and also uh, improving our own ecosystem. Makes sense, makes sense. So like with, people are asking questions in the chat, but I think we'll, we'll probably keep them for a little bit later. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to just move on. Like one thing that the demo upgrade brings is a, a great, uh, improvement for the developer experience, uh, the tech and the security uh, of the Alephium network um, blockchain. So it gets easier to make more powerful things. And uh, we want to understand a little bit more about this. Can you talk about how the tooling evolves, uh, like the SDK you've talked about in the past? Uh, what changes have we made uh, to this? And that makes it easier and more dev friendly, let's say. Um, so the SDK is one of the probably the most important uh, piece of infra infrastructure for the uh, for the whole ecosystem, uh, and it takes a lot of time and uh, energy to to make it well. Uh, for example, in the Ethereum ecosystem, they I think it took multiple iterations uh, for them to have good tools like uh, Hard Heights and uh, uh, Fungi. Um, so it's kind of the same for us. We started uh, at the main launch. We have a, a very simple and a minimal SDK available, and people can actually build the apps with that. But it's not really friendly enough. Uh, in the past, uh, since the main launch, we have spent a lot of time to improve the SDK, uh, to add more features, uh, add more tools. Uh, so now it's, it's really much more easy to build the apps with it. Uh, I, I want to highlight a few changes or a, a few features that we added uh, since the main launch. The first thing is uh, we have much better API endpoints uh, from main launch. Um, <clears throat> Almost uh, every release of the four nodes, we have some uh, either new APIs or some uh, improvements to the existing APIs. 
uh, we also introduce a development development tool for smart contracts like uh, comparison, testing, and uh, uh, deployments. Right now, you can do all of them uh, in three, uh, just one one line of commands. And we have kind of redesigned our uh, our smart contract even system. Uh, the initial version was a bit naive. Now it's more structured, and uh, people can use the SDK to interact with the events or the on the phone nodes. Uh, and uh, lastly, we added a lot of kind of uh, utility functions, abstractions for uh, common tasks, and also we introduce uh, uh, some standards to the uh, in the SDK. Uh, especially, I want to mention that we introduced a standard for wallets, and it's very uh, good for dev experience. Yeah. So yeah, that that's um, kind of the main main features. Uh, it all of them took a lot of time to polish, and some some of them we uh, went back and forth uh, in the design sometimes. But now uh, SDK is uh, I, I think is in good shape. We have been using it for uh, all of our uh, D apps like the Bridge, uh, Dex, and also NFT projects. We are uh, we we are enjoying using it at least. <laughs> so I guess it answers half of the question of the fix that is in the chat. That he asked if will the team build functional dApps to start the ecosystem growth. Like we've actually been doing this already, and since we've have been doing this, I think it fair, it's a fair question to ask you, Cheng. For the people who are a little bit less technical than than we than you are, especially, what does it change in the experience of the dev? Which uh, new features, you know, like like in a more understandable way? Like, can you can you tell us? Me for like, devs or use? for users? For devs, for devs. Um, for devs, I think um, even if you are not really familiar with the tech, the, the uh, technical details of RFU, you can still like uh, you can still build a simple D apps uh, with our SDK. I following just the the, the tutorial uh, we have, um, so I I think that that's uh, that's a very uh, very a uh, big achievement for adoption of RFU, right? Uh, we can onboard more devs, uh, like in the past or around many launch, we kind of need a very uh, kind of very high key. Uh, devs they can build on top of our RFU with uh, with the minimal or basic uh, SDK. But now I think if you are just a web uh, web dev, you can probably already start to build on top of uh, on top of us. Um, the I I also think that um, right now we have introduced a lot of uh, security. Improvements to the uh, full nodes and to the to the SDK to the language. It's kind of easier uh, for new devs to to build production ready applications because uh, you don't need to worry too much about the uh, the the kind of the the pitfalls security pitfalls. So if I if I if I sum it up, it, it gets way easier for way more devs to build much more powerful stuff. On tops of Alephium. Yeah, I think so. Well, that's cool. And and can you? So devs are gonna have to write this in in Ralph, the 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 development language, the programming language we have uh, on Alephium that is let's say the equivalent of what Solidity is to Ethereum. Can you tell us a bit more about how like where it is now? Because I I know you've been working a lot on this over the year. Yeah, we have been on uh, a lot on this because it's, uh, the language is a core part of the whole ecosystem. Um, the language itself has evolved a lot since the mainland launch as well. Uh, we introduced other great features like uh, dynamic array indexing, constants, error codes, uh, debugging, uh, language debugging supports, etc. Uh, especially we introduced a new syntax for the asset permission system, which 
it is much easier and more intuitive for devs to uh, approve ap approve assets in the language. Mm. So right now, I think the the language is pretty much uh, kind of complete, and we initially we want to design a domain specific specific language for uh, writing the apps on RFU. Uh, we don't want it to be too complicated. We just want it to be very specific for uh, for for the apps, uh, so that it's much easier to learn and to use. Uh, I think right now we have already achieved what we want you to do, and uh, we we have some small features to to add in the future. But right now, is very uh, ready for production uh, development. Okay, that's cool. And uh, how is the like? That's a question for both of you because you've both been hacking with it. Actually, how does the experience of uh, writing in Ralph? compared to the one uh, that is writing in Solidity? I'll get this. Yeah. Uh, I, I'll start first. Yeah, um, please. Yeah, uh, I, I personally built some the apps in the past, uh, in Soli uh, like some Solidity the apps in the past. Um, I remember like one of the greatest auditors uh, called Sam, Sam CZ, he so, once said that he personally is afraid to write any production the apps uh, because of there are so many security issues to consider about. Uh, so I, I feel kind of the same. When I write the solidity, I, I feel like I'm, I, I was playing with fire. Uh, you know, it can, it's very easy to shoot on the, on, on the foot uh, because of there are so many security, uh, potential security issues. So, so we're very happy now, that nowadays, you didn't burn down. <laughs> the also no, nowadays because uh, because of the network is kind of sometimes gets very congested and the gas gas can be very uh, expensive on Ethereum. Uh, a lot of people they start to write very they have to optimize the contract otherwise it's not really usable. Uh, and in some cases people have to write assembly codes. And that is first on one hand is very, very hard to write. You know, assembly code is like the, the bad code for a machine. It's not really for programmers. So on one hand, it's very hard to, to code. And on the other, on the other hand, it's uh, uh, introduce some new uh, security issues to the system because uh, it's a, much hard to write, so it's easy to to, to write bugs <laughs> in that approach. Um, but on that hand, uh, but if we build similar stuff on other field, it's going to be much easier. First, uh, a lot of the a lot of those security issues have already been mitigated or complete, completely eliminated. So you don't need to worry about that much, uh, and you don't even need to worry about the gas uh, issues uh, at all because. We uh, our virtual machine is much more optimized than virtual, uh, than the EVM. The gas cost itself is uh, is low, and the, the second uh, the second because we are uh, a shared blockchain, we can support much much higher throughput. So the the gas will not be an issue until we reach a very very massive <laughs> adoption in the future, right? So uh, in general, I think writing smart contract or D apps in uh, on RFU is going to be a much, much easier uh, and uh, friendly experience and uh, uh, developers can easily have fun. Cool, so Hongcha, you concur. You're having fun writing some of the <laughs> DApps where people will yeah, be I using very soon, actually. I, I agree with uh, Chen. Um, the, the, the compiler uh, can definitely guide you more to, to avoid some of the pitfalls, especially the security pitfalls. And also the 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 code is more concise. Um so just just as a example, like we when we implemented the the bridge, we have to implement like the smart contract logic pretty much the same as like Ethereum and Solidity and so on. And our code size is uh like order of magnitudes, like smaller. 
basically, and that that illustrate like how concise the the the, the code can be using this uh, language. Yeah. Okay. Great. Like so, talking about um, talking about DApps, like that brings us to a little bit more to the utility chapter of this discussion. Like again, people who are asking questions in the chat, I will ask them. I just come back to it later when we finish the discussion. So keep asking them. These are actually some very good questions. Um, so Hongcha, I want to ask you in terms of like more like the the Lemo upgrade comes at the same time as a let's say. Uh, a big update also on the front end uh, front, actually. So um, NFTs and smart contract interactions will be a big part of the front end upgrade. And also we're going to have very soon um, a browser extension wallet that you can already actually test on testnet. Uh, can you tell us more about the wallets, like the mobile wallet, the desktop wallet, the browser extension? Yeah, so we have a a uh, LFM uh, Wallet Connect imp uh, implementation, um, and our desktop wallet and mobile wallet uh, implements that, which means that uh, our DApps can talk to the our desktop wallet and the mobile wallet through the Wallet Connect. And as you said, we also have a like a, a browser extension wallet, so the DApps can also interact with the browser extension wallet as well. And as Chen mentioned before, we, we in the SDK we actually define a standard wallet interface, uh, and our like uh, Alphine Wallet Connect implementation and also the browser extension wallet uh, both implement that. And this interface basically supports a standard set of operations, like just give you a a a, a feeling. Uh, these operations include, for example, like how to use, uh, like connect and disconnect with the DAP and sign transactions or transfer, deploy contracts, sign like transaction scripts and, and so on. Uh, so once we have connected to like, like any wallets, uh, like including the desktop wallet, mobile wallet and extension wallet, uh, from the perspective of perspective of, of the DApps developer, uh, we can just like use this interface to 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 uh, like for example execute a transfer a transaction and things for things like that. Uh, we will provide uh, like some standard UI components such as like an auth component, which can help you to basically connect to like any wallets that we support. Through like Wallet Connect and and or like uh, browser extension, and from that point on, you can just like uh, continue developing the dev. Um, so yeah, that's basically the status of the of the wallet when it comes to like the interaction with the devs. Yeah. Okay, and uh, so everything is gonna be available on every platform basically. Yeah. All of these things. Oh, that's cool. And like about just about that, Cheng, can you do you know? When the the mobile wallet we've been talking for a while uh, will be available, and uh, will it be available on all OS platforms? Yeah, I talked with Mika um, about it yesterday. He told me that the Android version is uh, Android code is ready, and uh, right now the team is working on the iOS parts. So, um, hope hopefully. Okay. Really is going to be uh, ready soon. Yeah, that's great. That's great. And about about wallets, you've said on Discord last week, I think, that you were working on the ledger integration, like for the hardware wallet. Can you expand on that a bit? Because everyone is waiting for that for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I personally, I'm looking forward to using it as well. That's why I started to work on it with high priority. Uh, right now, I have already finished the. Uh, uh, the the minimal ledger up, so uh, it means the the hardware side is uh, has a minimal version. Uh, and uh, since this week, I'm working on the I'm I'm spending some of the time working on the uh, integration to the extension wallets. Um, but this turns out to be non trivial because I need to refactor the, the the wallet to support a new type of wallet. It, it it's tricky, so it will take some time. Uh, but I, I think probably in two weeks, uh, kind of work, 
in part time on that, so it will take yeah. more time. Uh, I think in two weeks we are going to have a, a first release. Fully, yeah. Oh, that's cool. So, so okay, that that gives a, a let's say a magnitude. That's really great. And um, so that's a question that actually I think um, the Objective Alpha or the Fix, I don't remember, uh, asked. But like it's also a question we have. So the, the core team has been working on dApps, like key dApps, like the bridge. Uh, we have um, a DEX uh, code somewhere and uh, some NFT prototyping. Uh, what will it work on next? Like how is the... How is the core team seeing working itself on core dApps, and what parts would be more uh, left or encouraged for the community to start working on? I don't know NFTs, DeFi, payment, social networks, gaming. Like, how do you how do you see that? Um, so, ideally, I think uh, for the very long term, ideally, like the whole DR, app development should be driven by the community. Uh, because uh, it's supposed to be uh, centralized in the very long term. Um, but right now, because the project is still early and uh, uh, not so many devs, so uh, core, core teams still need to build something and also build some prototypes to, to give inspirations to, for the whole community. Um, given the, our limited uh, time and the resources, Right now, our main focus is on the uh, the core components of DeFi, like DEX, uh, Bridge, uh, and uh, uh, also we are building, we, we have something for the name service stuff. Uh, and in the coming several months, we are still going to focus on, focus on uh, the well-known DApps that's kind of being proved by other ecosystems like uh, uh, name service NFT DEX as uh, well, and uh, we we are going to start to in, encourage and uh, uh, support community community devs to to build new new apps on top of us. Uh, regarding direction or topic, I I think uh, what kind of apps uh, should be in, encouraged. Uh, because you never know what kind of innovations the community can bring up, and so yeah, I personally don't want to push for a direction. Uh, but there may be some new, you know, the maybe some new directions. Uh, a lot of people uh, suddenly want to uh, put more effort on, like for example, social network payments, etc. Right now, is uh, they are uh, very hot topics, so. If um, there are a lot of kind of demand in, in some of the directions, we may uh, spare some of efforts on that as well. Build something to showcase our students because uh, that can potentially bring up new, new developers to our ecosystem, right? So that's basically the, the strategy right now. And, and we are a pretty small team and we are pretty agile. We always adapt ourselves to fit the, to, to uh, kind of build the, in the most efficient way. And we'll, we'll see what, what gonna, uh, be kind of the space is going to evolve in, the, in, in this year. Cool. And like about, about developing that, so Hong Chao, you've been working on NFTs uh, already. Um, partly working with a, with a, a project that has, is actually building it already an NFT platform on top of LFM. Can you tell us more a little bit about the, the NFTs on testnet, for example? Can we already mean the NFTs today on the testnet at least? Uh, yeah, we have deployed the NFT prototype on the, on the testnet. Um, so together with the extension wallets, uh, will be able to mint NFT. But since since the extension wallet is not published yet, you will have to go to GitHub and download the <laughs> download download the zip file. So it's a little bit more complicated. Uh, but um, but yeah we, we can mint the NFT on testnet. Okay, so can I share the link about that for the people who are interested? Yeah sure. So 
So here's the link to the NFT on testnet. On testnet, like you're just gonna have to go for the browser extension on GitHub first. Um, so we're getting to the end of the questions that I prepared. So soon we're gonna take the questions that were asked in the in the group in the chat. But still, uh, last week we we discussed uh, at the occasion of the 1.6 uh, upgrade of the full node. Cheng, you. We talked about a DAA adjustment, which is the difficulty adjustment algorithm. There was a change that was implemented in 1.60, uh, and uh, I wanted to give you a little bit more of an occasion to talk about this uh, live, and also for the people to ask questions if they have some. Yeah. Um, so in 1.60, we uh, included a big update to the DAA. Um, improves the existing DA by uh, to to stabilize the block time, um, and the uh, 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 the main issue in the the previous or in the original DA was that uh, because the uh, the mining difficulty can be different and the, the block reward of different blockchains can be different, it gives uh, miners miners different different incentives to mine on different blockchains, and that can cause the block the block time to be a bit dynamic uh, in some cases. So in this new version, we um, equalize the many uh, incentives by averaging the difficulty across different chains. Uh, and also we, uh, with this new DA, the transaction phase is going to be uh, uh, completely uh, burnt. The original one is only 50% uh, spent. The uh, motivation uh, was that um, the transaction fee is including the block rewards, and the block reward is going to uh, uh, affect the mining incentives or different blockchains. So we have to make it also the same for different blockchains, and burn it completely is going to uh, to be one of the uh, the solutions. Uh, so the improvement is already. Deep, uh, implemented and deployment deployed on the testnet from node. What I have seen right now is uh, many difficulties much much more stable than uh, than the previous version uh, on testnet. So uh, I think is is really great for the uh, for the whole network. Uh, and for the right now, it's not uh, triggered for the mainnet yet, and we are gonna to. Uh, it's going to be triggered once the lemma upgrade is activated. Uh, yeah. Okay. And like, okay. So uh, thank you. And like, last question before we get to the final section of this is uh, so when we talked about the lemma upgrade, a lot of people are often asking, and it happens also today uh, because uh, the Objective Alpha also asked us a question about this. Uh, the new listings makes more make more sense. Um, new exchange listing make more sense after the Lemon upgrade. So, uh, what kind of exchange listing are we considering? Uh, uh, we we have. Um, I I think the strategy is uh, is always the 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 same. We have been uh, replied to this question multiple times in the community. Uh, we're gonna to first try to deploy the bridge and then. Uh, make DEX available for the for the whole community. Um, this is the first priority, and then, uh, of course, for this year we're going to uh, to go for to uh, work on the uh, sex uh, centralized exchange listing as well, um, because uh, a lot of people they kind of still uh, use centralized exchange a lot, so. That's definitely a direction we're going to to work on. Uh, there's no no timeline for for now, but we're going to work on it. So this is something we're actively working on. Is the, the takeaway I, I I get from that? Uh, so okay, so thanks. Uh, I think we've covered most of the important aspects. And before we get to the questions that people have asked, I want to ask you, okay, very concretely, what happens now from now to the demo upgrade? What are the the steps. So right now, uh, I think uh, the core team is uh, testing and monitoring the 
1.60, which already includes all of the features and the changes for the lemma upgrades. It's going to be several weeks. And uh, uh, in parallel, we're going to communicate with the, the services like uh, Exchange, Mining Pool, to, um, to communicate that we are, gonna, we are ready for the upgrades. Uh, and then we're going to figure out a timestamp for, with the whole community to uh, activate the upgrades. So yeah, not too much on the technical side or on the community, like really only the community side right now. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, so it's more, I, I feel like it's weeks. A few weeks. Or do you few say weeks. Uh, yeah. few weeks? Yeah. Okay. So Everything goes over. well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but sometimes there will, there might be surprises. But usually, uh, I I I feel very confident this time because we have been testing it for long enough. Cool. Will there be a party for the launch? Party from today. Oh, the activation uh, activation timestamp. Uh, okay, so let me get to the questions that the people have asked in the in the in the chat. So. First, a question from Polto that asked if the bridging is, uh, if he understood correctly, is from ALF to ERC20 and ETH to a token on Alephium and then any ERC20 to Alephium. Right? We can import all ERC20s from Ethereum to ALF to Alephium, right? Um, yes. Uh, yeah. It's the bridge is going to be. Uh, permissionless, you, you can bridge any token to our film or bring, bring, uh, bridge any token from our film to Ethereum. Um, there's no limit on that. But I, I'm not sure like how the kind of the, the bridge will evolve once it's ready. Uh, we're going to see which stablecoin people would like to bridge. Yeah. For example. Like, like as Paul to says, like liquidity will be needed. Uh, like Montail and the Fix have a quite a similar question. Uh, not not really, but it's close. They're asking why Ethereum. Now, Montail says they had some weird stuff going on in the background ever since they became POS, and the Fix says that try like being clever actually. Like chain sent solidity is known to be very insecure. Why is the plan to create a bridge where well, they have to create a smart contract in Solidity on ETH network and open up the risk of a hack on the Ethereum side? So basically, the, the main question, I think, is why, why Ethereum first? Mm, I think uh, even though we are saying like the Ethereum VM has a lot of issues, uh, but it does not say as the current, the, the existing DApps is uh, not secure. Um, I think the main issue is that if you want to build new DApps on, uh, on Eastern, it's going to be much more, uh, it's going to be very challenging, very difficult. Uh, but the existing DApps like Uniswap, like uh, USDT, USDC, etc., have been tested by time and they have been audited multiple rounds. Uh, they have been investing a lot of money to make sure that those contracts to be secure. So uh, I think the security of those existing uh, well-known DApps are pretty pretty high. Uh, it's just the, the new DApps and the, the learning curve and the, the, the cost for security is pretty high in general. So uh I, I i i think like bridging with the uh, well-known dApps or well-known tokens makes great sense and right now uh it, it's also the same for bridge when it comes to bridges you have multiple options to, to uh, support uh, for example we choose choose uh we choose wormhole to to integrate because it's been has the highest token value, uh, lucky token value, and also it's been existing for like many, many years. Uh, even though it has been hacked multiple times in the past, 
The contracts itself, they uh, they have never been exported in the past. So the I think the security is very high. Yeah, in general, like there's no absolute security. It's always about the cost, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the with with the new virtual machine and the uh, new language, you can uh, can provide a very high uh, security by default. Uh, there are still some. There will still still be some cases you need to be uh, to be careful about. Uh, so, in I I think it makes sense to bridge to the very mature uh, existing ecosystem like ETH. Yeah. yeah, we are going to explore the ecosystem as well. Uh, yeah, and also I think I I would just add that you have to think both ways, right? We we're building a bridge to ETH, but we're also making it easier for people from ETH to come to Alephium, right, and to discover it. So it's 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 a win for it's a win. Um, Good point. Talking about security and hacking, like we got a question about the hackathon. Is it gonna come around uh, uh, or just after the Lemo upgrade? Um, time now again. No, <laughs> I cannot give a precise uh, answer to that. Uh, we just try to do it the best timing uh, at at the best timing. Um, now we are still planning a lot of the details. Yeah. That we uh, one of the uh, very important thing we want to before that is to pre uh, is to prepare um, some very good tutorial a series of good tour tutorials for devs, um, so that the it's much easier to onboard new devs from the community or from other ecosystems. So, well, yeah, so we'll do it when it's ready. Yeah, my main point is that we're actively working on that. Um, so we are. Like, what's the next question? Um, so the objective alpha asked a long question. It's which is most likely to come first: a non KYC sex such as Qcoin, Trade Augur, Ascendex, or an AMM based dex. Also, that relates to the listing question that we had before. I personally feel like. Uh... The DEX is going to be much easier, given our uh, progress, because the bridge is kind of ready. And uh, uh, if we want to get a list on Uniswap, then as long as the bridge is ready, you can get a list on Uniswap. We also made uh, a lot of progress on the on, on our native DEX. So we can also, once the bridge is ready, we can deploy the DEX. And then people can use the, the native decks to chat. Um, yeah, so I, I definitely think Dex is going to be uh, is going to come earlier than sex. Uh, but uh, I, yeah, maybe maybe sex, sex after can... sex after Dex. And like uh, where like uh, the objective alpha also asked like if it comes first on the Dex, who would be providing liquidity for the AM? I think the the project uh, the uh, the team will provide some initial liquidity and then um, uh, ecosystem will uh, follow up. I think yeah, it's, yeah. Because being the liquidity provider, you can you can make uh, you can gain some um, trading fee from the protocol. The by the way, we are not uh, in our design of the decks. Uh, there will be no. Um, kind of development fee. All of the fee will go to the liquidity providers. Uh, so probably this will give more incentives for, for the community community to provide liquidity. That's cool. And like the the question came now two times. Uh, on which side will be the decks you you would want to be first? Uh, would be east side or half side? I mean, my answer would be both, but like, I don't know what your answer would be. Um, my answer is also kind of I don't know. <laughs> uh, it, it's really it's really hard to predict uh, for now, like which uh, which decks is going to be uh, favored by uh, by the community. I I kind of my my current estimation is that uh, both will be used because uh, both will have some user bases. Uh, uh, 
So we will see. We will adjust based on the uh, reality. Yeah. If if like really people use the DEX uh, native DEX much more than the uh, DEX on other platforms, then we can probably focus on the native DEX. Yeah. Somehow I feel like it's it's good to use the native DEX. So probably. Uh, I personally hope that we are going to use the native text much more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to be more efficient, so we'll end up like this anyway. Hey, Lemo is ready. Sex and Dex are done, and developers are building on Alethium. What will be the priorities of the team after these steps are reached? So it's a bit of a perspective question. I think, Cheng, you could chime in on this. Um. <clears throat> I think there are quite a lot of things to 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 build uh, need to be built. First, on the funnel side, uh, still like uh, light light clients, uh, a bait P two P protocol, uh, and uh, uh, more kind of uh, optimizations to the storage, uh, and uh, some probably refactorization to make sure that the code bases uh, can have more. Uh, taste the coverage, etc. Uh, so for us, I had a lot of things to build, and it takes time. Uh, and then probably we're gonna to explore some uh, new directions to to leverage the scalability of the blockchain. Uh, like, uh, for example, I I personally am very in interested in the social network uh, applications because uh, it's going to good for massive adoption of blockchain uh, if there are some good uh, kind of good uh, use cases to to explore we're going to explore a little bit on that as well um, and the uh, payments as well uh, sounds very uh, necessary and also very uh, promising for the very long term then the bridge is bridge, uh, bridge sites. Right now we have wormhole. We we probably can connect to more blockchains. Uh, and also we can connect with more um, like other bridges to bridge to more ecosystem. Uh, and then uh, we can work on a lot of other integrations like uh, wallets. Uh, Right now, most of the wallets we are uh, are kind of built by ourselves, uh, by the core team. There are a lot of good uh, kind of uh, good wallets in the in the whole space. If we can get connected to them, then it's going to be a good leverage for for us. Uh, and uh, we are going to also uh, work with a lot of uh, uh, try to work with a lot of different communities to attract devs. Uh, because right now, most of the things done by the core team, uh, that's definitely not enough for the very long term. And uh, I, I personally believe that's a very open and a very uh, active dev community is the key to the future of RFU. So we're going to work very much on that. That's cool. And like, uh, Waldi and the Fix basically uh asked the, the same question, like besides the hackathon, is there anything planned how to find new developers to build Alephium? And the fix asked like, what will attract developers to Alephium? So, I mean, I, I, I think you've answered part of the question. Um, uh, people often ask what we do in marketing, but like we're actually doing a lot. Like for example, we're producing a lot of documentation so that when people come in the ecosystem, they don't start uh, from nothing. So there's a lot of uh, articles being written that make it way easier for the next guy to come in or to know where he looks, he should look for to start building. Then we do these partnerships that like uh, little by little make our name known everywhere and our features. And uh, there will be more of this, uh, a lot more of this coming. Um, so it's just not as visible as uh, as as a lot of things uh, that you can see in the tech side, but uh, it's 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 we're doing it uh, the the long way, let's say. Um, so I think we are done with the questions of the people, and it's actually six fifty seven. So if you have 
Oh, yes. Sorry, the Objective Alpha asked this question, like, how does the number of shards get decided currently in the future? That I think that points out to a very great question of decentralization, actually. Uh, that's a, a very good question. So right now, I think uh, uh, at the main launch, we choose to be, uh, we choose the, the groups to be four and the number of shards to be 16. Uh, because it can provide around like uh, four to five hundred uh, TPS. This TPS is kind of close to the TPS of uh, of PayPal, yeah. and I, I personally believe that it's going to take a, uh, take quite a long time to 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 reach that. Um, and uh, if one day we reach that TPS, uh, it means we reach uh, we we achieve the massive adoption, and it's going to be very cool. And after that, uh, then it's going to it's going to be easy like if if one day we we see that the network is kind of congested then we can start to uh work on uh, increasing the number of groups uh we we will need some uh engineering work to make it happen but yeah once we uh we get that high number of tps uh we will have time and resources to work on that Okay, yeah. great. I think it's a great question to to close uh, today uh, on, a, on a, let's say, on a, a look to the future. So thank you, Chang. Thank you, Hong Chao, for answering the questions, and I think hopefully making it a bit clearer for everyone uh, what the Lemo upgrade was and like what it allows for the future. Um, we will have more documentation on the Lemo upgrade coming and more updates to let you guys know when and how it will go on from now. Um, <laughs> thank you for all your questions. Uh, actually, we love to have such an engaged audience and like you have to know that you can still ask the questions either in Discord or in Telegram or in any ways you can reach us. We love those questions on Twitter too. Um, so thank you, especially also like, you know, the usual suspects. You will find this video. We will put it on YouTube, dear Mark. You don't need to worry. Uh, so yeah, thank you. Uh, we will have a, another tech talk next month. Uh, it will. I would like it to be with the front end team, but we don't know yet. So we'll we'll keep you guys updated. And also next week on Tuesday, twenty fourth at seven p.m. CET. So that's like basically now. We Cheng will be talking in the Twitter space with uh, one of the tech leads at uh, developer relations, I think, at Nervos. Um, so it should be a cool space uh, uh, in the same style that we did with the Flux uh, a month ago or something. So thank you, guys. Uh, we're going to close the video now. And uh, we keep asking you questions always. Uh, maybe move to general now. Thanks, Cheng. Thanks, Hong Chao. You can... <laughs> Bye, guys, and thank you, Seth, for organizing. Cheers. Bye. Bye-bye.